Welcome to a Lean Stacks instructional video. This is the second episode of the Spring Security Fundamentals series. In this episode, we continue to add a custom Spring Security solution to the Greeting Web Services project that was constructed as part of the Spring Boot Fundamentals series. In the first episode, we discussed all of the components necessary to construct the security solution, and we authored the entity model and data scripts. In this episode, we will construct the Spring Data JPA repository, the business service layer, and a custom user details service implementation. Let's get started. First, I'll open the Spring Tool Suite, or STS. In the last episode, we created two entity classes named Account and Role. We do not need a data repository for the Role entity at this time, but we will need to search for Account Entities. In the org example WS repository package, create a new Java interface named Account Repository. Account repository should extend the JPA repository interface. The entity type is account, and the primary key of the entity type is of type long. Annotate the class with the repository annotation so that it's detected and registered by the Spring Data Component Scanner when the application starts. Declare a single query method which searches the data store for a single account entity by the username attribute value. Now that we have created a repository component to query the data store, let's create a business service that manages the user account related entities. In the org example WS service package, create an interface named account service. Within the interface, declare a single method named find by username. The method accepts a string parameter containing a username to search for and returns an object of type account. Next, in the same package, create a class named Account Service Bean, which implements the Account Service interface. Annotate the class with the service annotation so that it's detected and registered by the Spring Component Scanner when the application starts. Use the auto-wired annotation to inject the account repository into the service. Finally, add the logic to implement the find by username business service method. Thanks to Spring Data, this amounts to just a single line of code. With the business service complete, let's construct a custom implementation of the Spring Security User Detail Service Interface. Begin by creating a new package to contain security-related components. Let's name it org.example.ws.security. Within that package, create a new class named Account User Details Service, which implements the User Detail Service Interface provided by the Spring Security Project. Begin by annotating the class with either the service or component annotation so that Spring will register it as a bean when the application starts. Next, use the auto-wired annotation to inject the account service into this class.
Finally, let's implement the logic for the load by username method, which is the only method defined on the user details service interface. This method is supplied a username parameter. The method behavior should search for a user matching the supplied username value and return a user details object describing the user. If the user is not found, the method should return null. In our class, we use the account service to search the data store for an account whose username attribute matches the supplied method parameter value. If none is found, we will return null. However, if an account entity is returned, use its attributes to instantiate a user object. The user object implements the user details interface and therefore is a valid return type for the load user by username method. Using the set of roles from our account object, create a collection of Spring Securities granted authority objects using the code value from our role entity. The final step in this method body is to use the constructor on the user object which accepts all the parameters which accepts as parameters the values for the attribute of this user details object. Let's run the application to test the new functionality. Open a terminal window and change directory to the project based directory. Type MVN Spring Boot Run and press Enter to start the embedded Apache Tomcat web server. At this time, we're simply testing to ensure that the application starts without error. Remember that as the Spring Boot application starts, the component scanner detects the new components that we have just created and attempts to perform all the requested dependency injections. If we have any problems in our Java code, it will cause an exception to print to the console. Since there are no exceptions, our new repository, business service, and security classes are correct. I would like to pause for just a moment for a word about the application design. The account service is quite simple at this time and many viewers may be wondering if it's really necessary to create this component. While it's not strictly necessary from a functional standpoint, I cannot understate the importance of creating application layers with specific sets of responsibilities. It is very common to have a business service which exposes public behaviors to operate upon a single entity or family of related entities. 
The account service is a perfect example of that. While there's currently just a single method named find by username, you can envision the account service with behaviors such as create an account, reset password, or add a role, just to name a few. It is true that we could have simply wired the account repository into the account user details service and not created an account service component at all. However, this design is short-sighted. Before long, the need for a service to encapsulate all the behaviors operating on the account and role entities would have emerged. Then you would be faced with an effort to refactor your existing code, or you could leave the code as is, but that means you have application logic operating on the account and role entities spread throughout various components of your application. Spend the time to plan and design up front to save time and money in the future. I hope you've enjoyed the second episode of the Spring Security Fundamentals series. Subscribe to the Lean Stacks YouTube channel and follow the Lean Stacks Google Plus page to receive updates as new episodes are published. As always, you can find more information on leanstacks.com. To view the complete repository illustrated in this episode, see the GitHub repository URL in this episode's description.